haven't talked about the zymosin before, so uh, start to make a video on zymosins and what are zymosins actually. Zymogens are inactive precursors of enzymes. As we know, enzymes uh, are secreted largely uh, via via our uh, some secretory organs like uh, like uh, pancreas. For example, so pancreas secretes many important enzymes like chymotrypsin or trypsin or something like that. Now those enzymes are not exactly secreted as uh, at their active form. Okay, so they are secreted uh, at uh, a precursor of that enzyme, and then the precursor is converted into the active enzymatic form. Now why they are uh, pretend to do this? Because suppose this is an organ. So let me draw an organ. So <coughs> here, start to draw. So again my mouse is traveling again okay so suppose this is an organ so this is no longer looks like any type of organ uh, anyways this is an organ and this organ produces chymotrypsin for example okay so let me write that so here we have this chymotrypsin enzyme now this chymotrypsin enzyme uh, is not made proper activated so this is a precursor of that chymotrypsin enzyme for example let me draw uh, this is for example our chymotrypsin precursor enzyme it is secreted by this organ okay now why would they produce this precursor because this precursor is not fully active it is active but not fully active uh, in fact most uh, it is it is mostly un, uh, unactive uh, it is mostly stayed in unactive portion okay because uh, if it is active if it uh, if this organ secretes this active enzyme chymotrypsin as as we know it is a protease enzyme right so it have the activity of degrading or cleaving the uh, polypeptide backbone into smaller fragments of amino acids so if it secretes the active or fully active enzyme then it, it is a probability that this enzyme can go in turn uh, into this organ and it can damage the organ itself because the organ is made up with cells and cell are uh, huge sources of proteins so whether the proteins are produced and cells are producing uh, the proteases now protease in turn is gonna uh, degrade the proteins of the cell so it's an oxymoronic step actually you can see in this case so to prevent this kind of event it need to produce a precursor which is not active at the level of cellular le uh, cellularity okay so when it is secreted and stay in the extracellular space or in, in near to cell it is not active whenever it reaches the bloodstream and it reaches its destination destination point only then uh, it start to active so in those if for, for maintaining this activity purpose it need to produce this precursor instead of a totally active enzyme so it produces the precursor now what is the precursor precursor is an enzyme uh, a precursor is having a polypeptide chain by, but instead of some some region of this precursor are containing amino acid sequences those amino acid sequences are junk in turn uh, in in those cases because for 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 the activation of this enzyme they do not need the presence of this junk uh, amino acid sequences or uh, as a result of the presence of this junk amino acid sequences as you can see in this picture one one of them is uh, that another is that so presence of this junk amino acid sequences this protein cannot uh, make a proper fold and thus they cannot act like a properly functional enzyme okay so what they need to do to make a properly functional active enzyme they need to cut this uh, amino acid out from their uh, whole polypeptide chain and rejoin uh, the other subunits together for for making a fully active enzyme okay so that is the work they need to do for doing that what happens so, so this is very easy so we have the polypeptide chain incorporating some of the, the, the regions which they don't need so it, we take uh, enzyme fewer enzymes which are the protea proteases or proteolytic enzymes which start to cleave this amino acid sequences from these two portions so these are the four amino acid sequences denoted here uh, which you need to cleave so they start to cleave the sequences and finally we, we get rid of these regions as you can see in this case and this case too we get rid of these four amino acid sequences but we, what we left we left uh, the fragment so this is a fragment again uh, in middle this is another and this is another so we need uh, we end up with three fragment of uh, functional uh, in uh, amino acid sequences uh, functional polypeptide chain we need to hold these chains together because if we start to cleave uh, this amino acid which are placed in the middle not in the uh, not in the terminal we placed in the middle so if we cleave these parts uh, out so it's a prop possible tendency it's a common concept that uh, these uh, terminal regions will go and get away so it's a probable chance of lost all these segments for preventing that we need to hold on to these structures previously and that is doing that that is ex exactly uh, been done by the presence of disulfide linkages or sulfide linkages so as you can see in all these cases in this picture it is illustrated pretty coolly uh, that 
in all this case you can see the sulfur uh, is actually interacting the sulfur is interacting with these regions and it is interacting with this place with that again this place so yellow colored bondings are shown here so in the previous forms as you can see in this case sulfur is holding the structure in, in, the, in this case too so this is a region we need to have this is another region we need to have but this middle region we do not need we need to cut away and we cut this away and after that before before cutting it away we hold these two structures together using the sulfur linkages so right after cutting this middle part we still can have a hold on to these two structures together unitedly so that is the same case which is happening in both the cases in all of these cases so that is really really important so we need to uh, have a, a very tight control over all these segments which we need to hold uh, on to uh, via the sulfide bridges and right after the cleavage of uh, the undesired amino acid sequences to make the say make the enzyme active uh, we can cut it away now but all the subunits can be hold together or not actually subunits all the other polypeptide chain portions are hold together and right after that what we end up with we end up with the fully active enzyme so in this case th this is the fully active chymotrypsin enzyme as you can see in this picture okay so that's how the, they are activated so zymogens are the precursors the precursors are, are made they are polypeptide backbones but some of the regions are hold together by sulfide bridges and uh, to, to hold the structures together even if we start to cleave the amino acid sequence from the middle and after that uh, these amino acid sequences are released and removed and all the other units are hold together tightly so that is the basic part and I hope that's going to help you to understand. Thank you.